Hi guys, today I want to talk about construction scheduling for your projects. I'm going to show you how I use the critical path method into helping you obtain a successful project. So today's all about construction scheduling and critical path method. So let's get started. This critical path method scheduling system started back in the 50s with the DuPont Corporation. See, they were losing some money on some of their projects because of erratic or mismanaged scheduling of the project. So their engineers started looking at the activities of the project that would minimize the time needed for that project. And then these activities would have to be completed in a sequential critical path order. That was how they came up with it. And one activity had to be completed, then the next activity had to be completed. And the construction industry adopted their method in the 70s. And then I started in the mid 90s with this critical path method with a computer software called SureTrack system. So I'm gonna get into a project as an example to show you how I use this critical path method scheduling. I completed a custom house last year. And on the simplest terms of critical path for a house or a ground up building is that you wanna do the excavation and then the foundation and then the framing and then the roof deck and, and install the roof so that you have it dried in. And then you can do your MEP rough-ins, your mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, and then get your inspections, and then do your insulation and drywall. That's the standard critical path that you want to follow. But I'm going to get into a more detailed list of the critical path activity items that will help you with your project to show you how you can minimize the overall time for your project. Here are the construction drawings of the house that I completed last year. It was a one-story, 1,800 square foot with a three-car garage, and you see there, and then the elevation drawings. And then from that, I did a 3D rendering for them, and it was uh, wood frame construction with a galvalume roof, exterior metal siding with a stone wainscoting, as you see. And then uh, the interior is just living room and kitchen room and two bedrooms and an office. To get a more detailed list on the construction schedule, I'll go to my construction estimate. I'll do a, an estimate on the entire project. And from that estimate, I'll take some items off of there and put into the schedule so that there'll be the activities of that schedule. And then for the durations of the schedule, of the activities you go to the particular item say the framing here now the takeoff it shows you how many man hours are going to be done for that framing and from that man hours you can determine your crew size and divide it out and you'll get the number of days and you can do that for all of your activities your foundation your framing your drywall and then you can get with your trade contractors also and have them give you some input on their time durations for their activities and from those items on your construction estimate i put them into my sure track scheduling system as you see here they become now the activities and you put them in order as i stated but i've got a more detailed activity list as you see and the durations are on the right hand side from your estimate or from your trade contractors. And then the short track scheduling system will give you a bar line for each activity. And from that, you link those bar lines together in the order that you've identified them. And as you go along there, some of them can be done concurrently, but this is your critical path that you've established for your project. One item's gonna be completed before the next item such can start. And your durations are already inputted, as you see. Now, the red is anticipated. This is a anticipated schedule for the entire project. You can see here that 
you can do some activities concurrently. But as you move along, this is your critical path as you go. And you're staying on top of all of these items as you build your project. Now, as you see, you keep doing tile work and flooring and such. And all of your activities are identified and they're all detailed out so that you can keep track of them for the entire project. Now, at the beginning of the project, what I like to do, as you see, I'm starting back at the beginning for this anticipated. And what you should look to do is set a milestone date. Now, we set this date a couple of months ahead of time. And the milestone date was to do the concrete pour for the house slab and the garage slab. And we set the date for November 8th. Now, that gives everybody on the job site that's on the site a target date to hit. The plumbers, the concrete, your excavators. And it also gives for everybody behind that schedule your material deliveries, your lumber delivery, your truss delivery, your framers. It says, okay, we're looking for the November 8th to do the work of the concrete pour. And so now it's established. Now you just want to track your progress on an as-built schedule. And as you see here, we go along with the project. And we started demolition on September 20th. And we identify that in an as-built schedule. Site clearing October 12th. set forms for the foundation and then we poured the concrete for the foundation on November 4th which was a week ahead of what we anticipated Now, in the SureTrack scheduling system, when you input the as-built dates, you'll see it changes to a blue color. And this is how you do it. You track it each day, each week, as you go along the project. And here's where we put the concrete pour in. These target dates or milestone dates are flag-raising events in the construction industry and they indicate that we've accomplished and completed a particular phase during the construction project. And it's somewhat like the five Marines that raised the American flag on the volcanic Mount Sarabachi during the Battle of Iwo Jima in World War II. They achieved on that mountain a milestone that the rest of the troops on the island could look up and see that they have achieved that milestone. And the other milestone dates that we established at the beginning of the project were the lumber delivery. As you see here, November 15th was a milestone date. And then our roof truss deliveries was November 25th. But since we were a week ahead of time, we had to reestablish those milestone dates and get with our lumber company and our truss company to deliver them one week before that. You want to continue to track progress and update your as-built schedule. And as you see here, we delivered lumber on November 8th, started framing on November 8th, and we were a week ahead of schedule at that point. And you want to look at your future milestone dates as you update your schedule and what you're anticipating in the coming weeks so that you can have the materials and the trade contractors ready to go. As you see here, we've the roof truss deliveries was November 15th and we installed the roof trusses that week of November 15th.
And then on the week of November 22nd through the week of the 29th, we installed the OSB siding and the roof decking. And the November 29th, the vapor barrier installed. And as you track the progress of your project on your as-built schedule, then you want to look at anticipated work in the future. Now, the red, as I said, is anticipated, and you want to look at establishing future milestone dates. And in this case, the metal roof panel were to be delivered on the week of December 13th. And another milestone date that we wanted to establish was the delivery of the metal wall panels. We wanted them delivered on the week of January 17th, as you see here. Now, the metal wall panel delivery was critical for our project. It needed to be delivered at that time and installed so that we could do the interiors, as it see here. We tied that metal wall panels into the plumbing rough ends of the interior for that project. And the plumbing rough ends could not be completed because we had to have hose bibs installed on the exterior. The sheet metal on the exterior wall had to be installed and then the plumbing had to be installed. So that was critical to, to do the interior, to hang the drywall for that project. As you can see here from our as-built schedule, our metal building panels, they were delivered on the week of February 7th. It was three weeks past our anticipated schedule of January 17th. Now, we had given the local supplier ample enough time to fabricate those panels. We gave him four weeks, and he stated that they could do it. But for whatever reason, their manufacturing plant in Shreveport just couldn't meet the schedule, and weeks went by, and they didn't deliver. So we ended up having to make a change of the material supplier and went with a local supplier north of Lovkin called Lehman Pipe and Steel. And he got those panels out to us within a week, but we lost three weeks in that schedule. And as you see here, our as-built schedule, our anticipated work was to install those wall panels and then do the plumbing roughs for the exterior hose bibs. But we worked around that as we blocked out that area for the hose bibs and then went ahead and completed the plumbing rough ends and electrical rough ends and then did the spray foam insulation. And when the wall panels finally arrived, we installed those wall panels and then hung the drywall at the same time. And the overall delay was around a week and a half to two weeks. Now, having time delays on these construction projects in military parlance is like the Follies Pocket that happened during the Battle of Normandy in August of 1944 during World War II. You see, the battle plan was for the Allied forces to encircle the German 7th Army, and General George Patton's 3rd Army was to come around to the south, and Bernard Montgomery's British 2nd Army was to come from the north, and he was to meet him at the town of Chambos thereby cutting off the supply line to the 7th Army. And for whatever reason, and historians will argue that Bernard Montgomery got held up and he couldn't make it to the town at Chambos. Therefore, what happened was 100,000 troops escaped out of that Follies pocket. And it's the same thing in the construction. You're losing time. You're letting time escape out of that Follies pocket to now where you got to come up with another game plan. You got to come up with another battle plan. And this is what we did with this project. We had to switch material suppliers. And then you want to just keep tracking the progress of your project on your as built schedule.
and you want to track the progress of your project also in the interiors we have done here mechanical electrical plumbing rough ends air conditioning rough ends and then our spray foam insulation and we sealed all the penetrations between the ceiling and the first floor and then the spray foam insulation and then hang the drywall at the same time we were doing the exterior wall panels and then trim work And then these custom cabinets were critical to this project on the timeline. It's because they had to be measured. We measured them before the sheetrock was installed. They came out and measured it. And then they had a production schedule back at their plant of about five weeks. So that was critical to stay on top of that. And they were had to be stained at the, at the job site. And then your tile backsplash installation. And plumbing trim out and so forth so you want to keep tracking the progress of your construction project and updating your as-built schedules as you see here on the interior when I hang and drywall install on the exterior metal and then on the overall tracking of the project the tile work and the interior painting and the cabinet work And the plumbing trim out. And then the final items of the project schedule, you'll see the exterior work that we completed and the change order work. Now, I started off with 100 activities on this uh, schedule and ended up with 113 activities. It's just a matter of adjusting as you go along and updating. And then if you have change order work, then you want to add those in also. Here's a picture of the completed project. Now, to summarize on the critical path method scheduling system, you want to identify all of your activities for your project and then establish the durations and the sequencing of your activities. And from there, you want to establish critical milestone dates. And then you want to keep track of the progress of your schedule on a weekly basis and do an as-built schedule adjust and or add activities if need be and then adjust your durations if need be and then keep all parties informed if you have a fall lease pocket problem then you want to revise your plan of action so you want to keep at this project until the completion of your project and if you do that you'll have a successful project so i thank you for watching and i hope success for your next project success success success, success.